The Kimberly Process Certification Scheme is the only international agreement overseeing the global trade of rough diamonds and preventing their use in funding deadly conflict. The Kimberly Process was set up in 2003 and represents a unique partnership of industry, civil society, and government. While the Kimberly process has been effective in certain regards, it has been criticized for responding too slowly to violations in the rough diamond trade, and has been asked to evolve to an expanding set of concerns. These shortcomings have caused certain important actors, like Global Witness and Human Rights Watch, to abandon the process. However, many stakeholders such as Partnership Africa Canada hope that 2012 will be a breakthrough year in terms of reform for the Kimberley process. Diamonds have been used to fund deadly civil wars, but also to cause a myriad of problems that destabilize countries and make conflict more likely, including exploitation of vulnerable populations, corruption and slow economic growth, and human rights abuses. Oftentimes, countries with rich natural resources do not profit from them, but remain poor and fall prey to the resource curse. In order to prevent the outburst of new conflict, the Kimberley process ought to play an active role in ensuring that diamonds contribute to peace building. This is written into its UN resolution, but this focus and potential has not been actively exercised. On November 27th through the 30th, Kimberley process members will convene in the United States to reevaluate the process. We have four specific suggested improvements for the Kimberley process. One, expanding the definition of a conflict diamond. Two, insisting on better monitoring standards and statistics. Three, judging mines on a site-by-site -site basis. And four, supporting development initiatives in local communities. First, the definition. Originally, conflict diamonds only referred to rough diamonds used by rebel movements to finance wars against legitimate governments. Since the definition is so narrow, Countries whose diamonds fuel violence and human rights abuses slip through the system and enter the certified diamond trade. Additionally, diamonds that are crudely cut or cheaply fastened to jewelry are able to slip through the process. The definition could be rewritten to avoid these two shortcomings. Second, the Kimberley process ought to insist on better monitoring standards for all countries and demand clearer statistics. This should not be seen as a case of Western arrogance and deploy to gain more control in developing countries nor as an excuse to limit country membership. It is a step the international community ought to take to ensure that diamonds actually benefit the communities they come from. This brings us to our third point. For sustainable economic development to happen, mines and manufacturing sites should be considered individually instead of by country. This would demand a closer evaluation of procedures and ensure that mines that adhere to Kimberley process standards are rewarded and not punished due to a country's mining reputation. This follows a broader trend in regulations in other mineral industries. Fourth, the Kimberley process can play a more active role in supporting sustainable development initiatives in the diamond industry. This would prevent small-scale local artisanal miners, usually the most vulnerable stakeholders, from being excluded, which often happens when stricter monitoring standards are required. The Kimberley process has already taken steps in this direction. It held its first ever conference on development this June. One established development group is the Diamond Development Initiative International, which is currently working to create development diamond standards. Another is the USAID Property Rights and Artisanal Diamond Development (PRAD) program, which helps give local miners land rights. As was suggested from the conference in June, the Kimberley process could establish a technical assistance working group on development and could grant development organizations associate organization status. Now nearing its 10th year, the present situation requires the Kimberley process to evolve to a changing set of issues within the diamond industry. By playing a more active role in preventing conflict than it has in the past, the Kimberley process has the potential to evolve into a more effective and beneficial agreement for the international diamond industry and for the international community.